Hello, uh, Wendy Seal. We're here in North East Scotland, um, just outside Aberdeen. Uh, Vital Veg, which is um, a market gardening business that I've owned and run for 12 years. Um, we employ five people and then uh, additional casual labour during the summer. Um, we've got 10 acres of vegetables and uh, it's surrounded by um, a bigger farm. The whole farm is 130 acres. We have quite a lot of trees on the farm. There's a 50 acre block of mixed native woodland, which is 12 or 13 years old now, and various hedges that we've planted over, over the years, including a number of um, mixed hedges in the vegetable field and around the vegetable field to provide protection. There's lots of reasons for having trees on the farm, um, partly because I love trees. They're fantastic and it's, such a, it's a real privilege actually to be able to plant trees, to have enough space to plant them. But besides the fact that they're wonderful and beautiful and valuable things in their own right, the trees provide a really useful service for us on the farm. And one of the main motivations for planting trees um, for the vegetables is shelter. In, increasingly we're getting stronger and stronger winds coming from the, um, particularly from the west, it's very hard on the young vegetable plants. Um, we plant our vegetables out as, as transplants, a lot of them, and uh, strong winds can really quickly dry them out before they've had a chance to get rooted into the soil and it can decrease the establishment um, quite significantly. So. Planting hedges in the field in strategic points to break up the wind um, really um, will help improve the establishment of the, the vegetables. It also um, provides a habitat, hopefully for beneficial organisms, um, uh, pollinators and um, parasitic wasps and, and um, birds who will hopefully um, reduce the number of uh, pests amongst the vegetables. So uh, shelter, um, a, a habitat for beneficials, and uh, the, the own um, beauty of the trees are key motivations. The, the hedges that we've planted in amongst the vegetables are mixed hedges. They're mostly hawthorn, um, which is a, a really good um, wind-resistant, tough hedging plant. But they're, they're, hawthorn is interspersed with other species as well. And amongst those we put some trees that could provide an income. Um, because we're in the northeast of Scotland we have to we have to be aware of the weather conditions here so we can't plant walnuts or or even apple trees really because of late frosts. So the the trees we've got here that could provide a, a crop for us are, are rowan, uh, for rowan berry jelly and um, Elder for elderflowers and elderberries. We also have crab apple um, for crab apple jelly. So those those are the three key um, cropping species that we have interspersed in, in the hedges. Um, establishing the hedges, the the way we did that, um, we ploughed a, a strip of ground into um, one of the, the it's a five year rotation in the vegetable field. So um, two years out of every five the ground is in what's called a lay, a mi mixture of grass and clover. So in that period we then ploughed a, a strip through the lay in the, in the place where we wanted to put the hedge and then planted the young hedge plants in, into that strip. Because we have a, a deer and rabbit fence around the whole of the field we didn't need to use any, any tubes to the, the trees from that. In the first two years after planting we kept the, the hedges weeded and at the end of the second year going into the third year we actually cut the hedge down quite low, about um, a foot high, to try and make the, the hedge denser and to, to encourage branching. So it's a, it's a double hedge, they're all double hedges, so two rows of plants um, about a foot or 18 inches apart, still planted in a, in a staggered um, pattern to get a nice thick, um, hopefully windproof, windproof hedge. But there are um, some 
downsides, potential downsides, that the hedges do take up space, um, not just for the hedge itself, but we, we have um, an issue here with cooch grass, which has invaded the, where, the, where the hedges are planted, and it will creep out into the fields, especially during the um, time in which we've got lay down and the ground isn't cultivated. So what we have to do in, in the places where the cooch grass has become worst is to keep a, a strip fallow beside the hedge to prevent the cooch grass invading into the field. The, the hedges and the vegetable field and also a windbreak which we put to the west of the vegetable field um, are uh, are here courtesy of the Woodland Trust. The Woodland Trust have a project for specifically for organic tree putting trees on organic farms. It's called the PUR project, P U R. Uh, and the Woodland Trust were absolutely fantastic actually uh, helping us with this um, project. They provided money for the trees and for fencing, and they also helped us with the um, choice of species. Um, we, we had a local advisor here who helped us with that and also with the design. Um, so the design of the windbreak, we've got a um, 300 metre long windbreak and the Woodland Trust advisor helped us select the species and, and the, the way in which they're planted in the windbreak to get the maximum benefit of that. Um, the hedges are spaced in, in the field according to our cropping rotation so as I mentioned earlier we've got a five year cropping rotation so basically the vegetable field is divided into five blocks and each of those is defined now by one of these um, wonderful hedges.